Oh my goodness. You're so cute. I love you. We have a sleepy little girl in today's video. She's my little helper for the day. She's on a break right now. She's been putting in so much work. But today I'm gonna show you guys my updated makeup routine. This is what I do for my makeup when I want it to stay on all night. I want it to look its absolute best. And it's been a long time since I have filmed a makeup video. So I'm really excited to show you guys everything because I think pretty much all of my products are completely different from the last time I showed you a makeup video. Also, I wanted to just show you guys, but I started the process of removing this tattoo. I'm gonna get into it a little more in the video, but I did just go in and get that done yesterday so if you can notice all of like the red and the bruising, that's why. I have been having my primer sit on for a little bit. I used the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base and the Milk Cosmetics Hydro Grip. I used this all over and then I just used this in my T-zone. I've also been using the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, I think. It's completely worn off. I feel like it gives me some color and like hides some of my redness before I go in with like my foundation and stuff. I also did get a facial yesterday when I was getting my tattoo removed. I went to No Filter Aesthetics and my skin looks so good. I don't even wanna put makeup on. I feel like I could get away with no makeup right now, but I'm also in the mood to like completely beat my face because I know my skin just looks so good. I want to put makeup on. I did also invest in the Hourglass Concealer Brush. I am obsessed with this brush. And no matter what, I always make time to apply my concealer now like this. It's a little more time consuming than just like going in with the applicator of the concealer. But it looks so good and so flawless. This Hourglass Concealer I think is the best concealer I've ever used. It is so blurring under the eyes. It's crazy. I feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about like blurring concealers, but this is the first one that I've used that I've actually noticed. It gives me like a blurred out effect. I'm going to add more later on, but I've been letting my concealer sit on and I've been loving underpainting. I'm ridiculously low on my Fenty matchstick in the shade Truffle. Like I'm digging my brush in here, but I just want to keep using it because I still get a lot of product out. It's so hard for me to do my hair first before makeup. So I'm going to clip in my ponytail extension later on. That's why my hair is like up in a ponytail right now, but I'm gonna put my ponytail in a little later. So I just kind of did my hair first before filming this video and I am not a hair first girl. I always do my hair after my makeup and sometimes i feel like i'm the only one who does that so many girls i watch do hair first and then just kind of like clip it out of the way but i for some reason i cannot do that back to my tattoo removal i did not do any research on tattoo removal i literally just messaged my esthetician and i asked her if they do tattoo removal at no filter and she said they do and i literally was like okay I'll, i want to do it so when I was there yesterday, we did it and I did not know what to expect because like I said, I didn't do any research. I don't know anyone who's had a tattoo removed. So I kind of was going in blindly. They, of course, were giving me a lot of information, but um, I just don't know anyone who's ever done it. At first, they used like this like cryo machine and they pretty much like frost bit my wrist. Like it was like this very cold air just blowing on my wrist and then once it was kind of a little more numb, they went in with the laser and just kind of like zapped it through, which I get really freaked out when it comes to like holes and dots. Like I cannot look, you guys need to look up trypophobia and let me know if it freaks any of you guys out because I cannot stand trypophobia and it kind of reminds me of that like reminds me of those like creepy little holes i'm gonna put a video on the screen i did take a video of them doing the tattoo removal yesterday i'm gonna put a video on the screen so you guys can see what it looked like right afterwards it pretty much looks like frostbite like it looks very frosty and very white pain wise it actually wasn't that bad i've always heard people say that it really 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 hurts and they did tell me like the darker areas is where it hurts the most so like the chin and like this ear right here if you guys can tell all of like the really dark areas those hurt the most thankfully my tattoo had a lot of very light areas so it didn't actually hurt that bad at all if anything the look of it just freaked me out like the look of those white dots just really 
just grossed me out. So I have to go back in six weeks. We're gonna do another session. And then I think they said that they think it'll take about six sessions. It all just kind of depends on you know, the person, how you take care of it in between and stuff like that. I'm really excited to get on this tattoo removal journey. I got this tattoo when I was 18 and it's just not me anymore. Every time I take a picture, like especially if I'm doing a photo shoot and I'm in a photo shoot and I'm taking pictures and I can see it in the picture, I just don't like it. Like I really just, it bothers me. It almost makes me not like some pictures when I'm working, when you can see the tattoo. I just applied my first layer of foundation. I'm using the Luminous Silk Foundation from Giorgio Armani. Best foundation ever. I've known about this foundation for years and I actually worked with Armani on a campaign last year and they sent me this foundation and I have been obsessed ever since. It's the only foundation I've used for the past year and I have two of them. I have shade 6.5. I'm really tan right now so I'm using 6.5 when I'm not super tan i will go in with 3.5 is my other one i'm obsessed with my skin right now i wish i was somebody who didn't have to set my face because this glow right now like i'm obsessed with it but i have to set my face i i'm a creasing girl i crease so much so i do have to go in and set my face and i am going to add more product i'm going to do more concealer i'm going in with my hourglass concealer again i'm using a different shade so my first shade i used was cotton and this next one is cream cream is an extremely light concealer i do like the big triangle under the eye and then just kind of like swoop it back my hair is going to be up in a slick ponytail pretty much how it is now so i really just want that like lifted effect on my face and i always have to get my chin and my forehead before i blend all my concealer out i'm going to take the giorgio armani luminous silk cheek tint in the shade 62. i love this product i just recently started using this it blends so easily and it's really 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 buildable i always just start by blending it out with my fingers and i really just focus on like going back before i blend everything out i am going to get my powders ready because like i said i crease so easily so i'm going to do two powders the huda beauty easy bake loose setting powder in cupcake for under my eyes and then for all over my face i'm going to use the laura mercier translucent powder i would actually use the charlotte tilbury powder but it's in my purse which is not that far from me but i just don't want to get up and go get it and i also don't have any of the little puffs near me either so i'm just going to use my beauty blender and then i know i'll have to add more blush because i don't even think you guys can really see the blush right now because i added such a small amount but i like to almost kind of have it blended with my concealer oh, i'm gonna take more of the armani blush i feel like that blends out so good with literally just your fingers okay let's set everything i'm first dipping a little bit into laura mercier and then kind of patting it off of my wrist this is something that i just learned how to do and it makes sense but i don't always do it so sometimes i will just like go straight from the like container to my face but if i do have time and i'm not rushing i'll pat the product off a little bit and i'm not going to put too much under my eye i'm pretty much just setting it and preparing it for the huda beauty foundation or huda beauty powder huda beauty tap that off a little bit and then bake right under my eyes i'm going to make a triangle and just kind of blend it all out with my beauty blender as i'm baking i just accidentally grabbed so much powder and i patted it off on my wrist but still there's so much so we have a lot of blending to do i am also going to use that huda beauty powder to kind of bake my chin and my forehead I feel like my t-zone is my area that i need a lot of powder and then everywhere else i just very lightly set it and i don't really like to wear eyeshadow but i do always put bronzer on my eyes so i need to make sure my eyelids are matte and set so they don't crease now we need to add some color back into my skin because i feel like i just look like all plain right now and i need to add in some color so i'm taking the mac give me sun bronzer and just 
adding some color into my cheekbones, my forehead, my nose. I feel like I have a very light hand when it comes to putting bronzer on. I'm just kind of like doing these like swiping motions and I take everything into my hairline because I hate those like lines around your hairline with no makeup on them. So I always push all my products into my hairline. I'm just going to grab a little bit of powder and kind of carve out right along there to give me a little bit more defined jawline or like cheekbones. I really wish I was good at nose contour, but I'm not. So I'm literally taking my big bronzer brush and I'm just tapping a little bit on my nose to give my nose some color. Like I wish that I knew how to like completely reshape my nose with makeup, but I'm so bad at it. I've tried so many times and I just kind of do this. Still using my bronzer, I'm taking one of these fluffy brushes and I am just kind of doing some like back and forth swipes on my eyes and then I'm just like really focusing on going back because my hair is up. It's really going to kind of like push the face back and then I don't like to add too much. I'd rather add a little bit and then build on it. So I'm just going to add a little and then really just focus on bringing it straight out. I just realized I don't have any earrings on i should have put on my little gold hoops my blush just recently changed i was using the mario which i still love but i just started using the giorgio armani blush in shade 61 and it is the prettiest blush i've literally ever used in my entire life and it blends out like a dream i feel like a lot of people don't use armani or like they do i just don't hear people talk about them much but armani's makeup is the easiest to blend out especially like if you're first starting out or if you just do your makeup really fast like it blends out so easily and it's so buildable okay i feel like i have my blush on now i'm just going to lightly almost like blend it all together like that so we don't have any harsh lines time to set my face i use a lot of setting spray like i literally drench my skin in my setting spray and i seriously swear by that like that is the only way to set your skin is to completely drench it and then i literally take my mirror like my base travel mirror and i just fan my entire face so it's time to drown my skin Okay guys, I'm back and I obviously have my lashes on now too and I'm so glad I decided to do those off camera because lashes for me, I can either put them on in a second or I have to redo them three times and today was the redo them three times type of day. So I'm so glad I did those off camera but I'm gonna show you guys the lashes I use because these are from Amazon and mine are all ripped up. As I use them, I always like cut what I don't need anymore. So these are the ones that I use. I'm going to link them down below. I have been using the same ones for quite a while. I don't know how I discovered these, but I love them and I only do a half lash. So I only like I cut them in half and then just add onto my outer corner because I love that like slurped back slurped slick back or whatever it's called look that it gives my eyes and my face i feel like it just like really elevates my face a lot eyebrows like i said i just did like i took my makeup off and just added my clear brow gel now i need to do my lips and then i also need to add just a little bit of highlight on my nose so for my lips i'm gonna do probably what am i gonna do i know i'm gonna do a nude lip but i have so many options for like nude lip products i actually think tonight i want to do a glossy lip i had plans last night and i did just like my usual like satin lip but i think tonight i'm gonna do a glossy lip so i'm gonna take my Mar makeup by mario lip liner i forgot what it was called uh in the shade travis and i'm just going to outline my lips I feel like it's so quiet in the room right now while I'm doing my lip liner, but I don't want to like play anything in the background either. When I do my lip liner, I do also kind of like shade in to give my lips like a more like pouty contoured look. I actually saw a video the other day that was like the best lip combos are when you do like four or like multiple products instead of just like one or two. And I'm like, who needs like four products? And then I'm like, looking at all the products I'm using and I'm literally using four products on my lips tonight. So I'm gonna do the Essence This Is Nude lipstick. This is a really, really, really good um, drugstore nude lip and I don't know what it is. 
this lipstick smells like candy it smells so good so i'm just going to do this on the outer corners of my lips And then now I'm going to take the KKW shade nude one. This is very, very, very light. And I'm only going to add it right in the middle. And then I'm just going to blend all of those together. And I feel like if you liked like a nude, um, what's it called? A matte nude lip, like you could just stop here, but I am going to add some gloss and this is the prettiest baby pink gloss. This is flower crown by Morphe. It literally gives you the best glossy nude lip. Lastly, I'm adding some highlight on my nose. This is from the brand Pure and it's in the shade Afterglow. And I have a super crooked nose, but I love a highlighted nose. And then just like a little bit up here. And that's it. I was literally in the middle of filming my outro and my camera decided to die. So I had to stop and switch out the battery. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'm going to link all the products I used down below. And then I'll also leave my shades down below, which I think I did a pretty good job at naming everything. But all of the information will be down in the description box. I'm also going to leave my Instagram and my TikTok down below as well if you guys want to follow me on there. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more of me, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what other videos you guys want to see from me. I felt like I had to give you an updated makeup routine because it's been so long since I have done anything makeup related and all of my products are pretty much different. So yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Bye.